What's up YouTubers, Mr. McRaven here, back again with another video for you boys and girls out there. Now in today's video what I'm uh, actually going to be showing you is a couple of graphs that I did uh, from some benchmarks, uh, gaming benchmarks uh, that I run, but this time it wasn't on a graphics card as such, it was actually in fact on the integrated graphics uh, on the new Haswell i7. 4770K CPU. Now I heard a lot of stuff uh, about the uh, new and improved internal graphics on this uh, processor and since I had the processor I thought I'd give it a shot, try it on a couple of modern titles and uh, see how well it uh, can actually uh, perform. So what I did is I ran three FRAPS benchmarks, uh, 60 seconds each, uh, that's uh, three minutes altogether in each game at different points in each uh, game. Now most of the game is all set to the lowest preset except where it says in the uh, title of the graph. Uh, there was one or two games I actually managed to run slightly higher or with uh, AA enabled or anti-aliasing enabled. This is by no means a serious review of the integrated graphics of this uh, the, of the new Haswell CPU but it is just a general um, look at how well it can perform in uh, modern titles on its own. Now it's not really intended for that use. Uh, it is of course a good idea to get a dedicated uh, graphics for that. But we just wanted to take a look to see how well it can actually uh, perform on its own. So the first one to look at uh, which I ran was Battlefield 3 at the lowest preset with no AA, no AF, nothing, everything as low as it could possibly be and it was uh, set at 1920 by 1200 resolution which is quite high and uh, we can see the minimum 13, a maximum of 21 and an average of 16 so it's not really playable by uh, any stretch of the uh, imagination on Battlefield 3 which is going to be intense on any graphics card let alone the integrated graphics of a uh, CPU. So it ran, but uh, it was certainly not playable. Now Bioshock Infinite, again low settings, pretty much all across the board as much as possible and a similar kind of thing occurs here, 10 on the minimum, 14 maximum and 11 on the average. So this is what I was kind of expecting on some of the games, I was expecting them all to be low like this and then there was Borderlands 2, low details, physics turned off, again same resolution on each of these benchmarks, minimum of 10, uh, maximum of 16 and an average of 15 on Borderlands 2. I, I was actually expecting this to run a little bit better but uh, it didn't. Now Crisis 3 Hunter Edition on the lowest settings available we have a minimum of 11, a high of 20 which I was quite shocked by and an average of 14 FPS. Now I wasn't actually expecting this game to run at all but it did even though it was appallingly impossible to play. So moving on to the next one. Now Metro Last Light all on the lowest settings and yet we have a minimum of 23, a high of 37 and an average of 30 frames per second. Now if you're playing Metro Last Light on a slightly smaller resolution screen you would actually say that this game is playable on low details and it was just about playable on the uh, on a the 1200p screen that I'm using at the moment but I was quite shocked at the results uh, for this game considering how modern it is and how much uh, how good looking the game is I was quite surprised to see such a uh, high number in uh, the results on that one. Now Torchlight 2 again not too taxing on the GPU but so I ran this one too Torchlight 2 and maximum details 1920 by 1200 at the same resolution. Now minimum of 22 frames per second, maximum 48 and a healthy average of 39. So it was a very playable game, very smooth, no issues playing that game at all uh, using the uh, integrated graphics there. Tomb Raider, the latest version, not any older version, the, the latest version of Tomb Raider, all the settings were turned on to low and I think uh, FXAA was enabled but we can see here the low of 23, a high of 44 and an average again of 30 so a very modern title, uh, quite a good looking game even on the low preset if, it's, uh, if you're just looking for a bare playability it was still a very playable game even on the lowest setting so I was quite impressed that uh, Metro Last Light and Tomb Raider both together were able to play on the integrated graphics. It was actually quite shocking, especially when you consider uh, that the resolution is uh, quite high uh, for the integrated graphics to be running on. 
Now, I did a quick chart, I added up all the numbers, and I worked out an average across generalized gameplay, so I did an estimated gameplay averages. Now, on average, I would say the integrated graphics will probably give you about 17 to 20 FPS on the minimum. It'll probably give you 28 to 32 on the maximum, and around 20 to 25 frames per second uh, average uh, FPS uh, across generally most games. But this is just a very general graph indeed. So we'll go quick, quickly through the graphs again. Battlefield 3, pretty low and unplayable. Bioshock Infinite, again, all pretty low and unplayable. Borderlands 2, similar kind of thing there, pretty unplayable. Crisis 3, unplayable. Metro Last Light, just about playable, which was uh, quite nice to see. Torchlight 2, not a problem at all. So any games that are similar to Torchlight 2 will probably run quite well. Tomb Raider, that was quite a shock to see that that ran uh, quite so well on uh, even on low details there at their resolution. So that was good to see. And we're back to the averages. So as you can see there uh, from those graphs, uh, that uh, some games are going to give you quite a surprise uh, when it comes to playability. So there was Metro Last Light, Torchlight 2 and uh, Tomb Raider, uh, the latest version. And they're all fairly modern titles, but they were very playable. The details weren't set on high, there was not lots of eye candy, but they were indeed just about playable on the integrated graphics alone. Now, having never previously owned uh, some of the uh, older generation uh, Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge uh, Intel CPUs, I can't really tell if uh, how much of an improvement this is over the old integrated graphics, but maybe some of you viewers out there can tell me and let me know if you think it is an improvement. And let me know what you think about the, uh, the integrated graphics uh, performance that you can see there. Now it is, of course, just a very rough stab at, uh, at a test, but I thought I'd share the results with you as I found them uh, quite interesting. Now if this video proves helpful to any of you looking uh, to purchase uh, the i7 4770K or its younger i5 uh, sibling, um, then I hope it does help in uh, some kind of way to understand how the uh, integrated graphics uh, works. So I've been Mr. McRaven, it's just been a very quick review of the integrated graphics, the HD 4600 on new Haswell CPUs. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. If you like the video, click like. If you want to see more, subscribe and uh, I'll see you soon. Till then, take care.